Self-defense is instinctive to all living things. However, in our modern civilized world, we can lose touch with our instincts and become unaware of our potential vulnerability. Our environment has become so noisy that we fail to see when we are alone and unprotected. In an instant, this delusion of safety can be irrevocably shattered. Suddenly, we find ourselves open to attack and everything is at stake. Fortunately, self-defense is possible for everyone. By taking advantage of the natural weaknesses of your assailant's body, you can overcome a larger and stronger opponent. Every attack has a counterattack. There is always an opening that can be exploited. The techniques of Qi Na encompass many practical methods of self-defense. Qi Na can be learned by everyone, from the average citizen to the expert martial artist. Qi Na techniques can be used to survive a life-threatening encounter. Qi Na descends from the time-honored Chinese martial disciplines of Kung Fu. Kung Fu is a Chinese term that literally translates into skill that is acquired after hard work over time. Although Kung Fu is centuries old, it retains many valuable lessons for our modern world. It has been preserved for generations for this reason. This videotape is part of the Wing Lam Kung Fu Federation's instructional series on authentic and traditional Chinese Kung Fu. This federation was founded by Sifu Kuang Wing Lam to teach and promote traditional martial arts and culture. Sifu Lam is a master of the art of Kung Fu. Kung Fu includes hundreds of different styles of training from the vast history and huge population that is China. Sifu Lam specializes in several styles of Kung Fu, including the powerful fighting style from southern China, known as Hongar, the complex style from northern China, known as Shaolin, and the sophisticated style of Sun Tai Chi Chuan. Sifu Lam has been teaching in the United States since 1967 and has taught both in this country and abroad. Kung Fu can take a lifetime to master. Ancient warrior monks spent years in isolated monasteries practicing this discipline to achieve enlightenment. Fortunately, you do not have to be a master or a monk to defend yourself. Qi Na extracts martial techniques from Kung Fu that take advantage of the natural weaknesses of the human body that anyone can use. This videotape will demonstrate techniques of Qi Na used to counter a grab to your arms. Before these demonstrations, it is important to understand the meaning Qi Na and its connection with Kung Fu. Some exercises will also be discussed to warm up your joints and increase your flexibility. These are important steps in preventing injury. In these demonstrations, each technique will be followed by variations and counterattacks. Chi Na can be used to counter Chi Na. It is crucial to understand that every attack can be countered, including your counterattack. Being flexible and adapting to the circumstances underlies all Chi Na. Chi Na can be translated loosely as controlling the opponent, attacking their weaknesses. Control is established through grabbing and restraining your opponent. Once you take control, you create an opening through which you can attack. These attacks are achieved primarily through the use of pressure points and joint locks. Any sort of martial technique that seeks to control the opponent's actions then takes advantage of the body's natural weaknesses can be considered Qi Na. The individual character for Qin literally means grab. In a martial context, Qin has a deeper meaning, defined as control with a light force. The Qin is never used alone since by definition it does not resolve the conflict, it only establishes initial control. Qin techniques must always be followed with Na techniques. Na can be loosely defined as grabbing with increased power. These techniques attack the joints, muscles and tendons. Na techniques may hyperextend your opponent's joints or attack their pressure points. A Na technique can be applied without being preceded by a Qin technique since ultimately the opponent is subdued. Kung Fu is taught in sets or movement sequences similar to gymnastic routines that have been passed down for generations. Here is a set from Shaolin Kung Fu. Many of these movements are actually practicing Qi Na techniques. These movements are frequently exaggerated to increase their difficulty, to challenge the practitioner to achieve a greater level of skill. 
Sets are very exacting in regards to body positioning, training the practitioner to remain balanced in the most extreme of situations. In regards to actual combat, these movements are not to be taken so literally. Each movement in a set must be adapted to fit the immediate situation of combat. These interpretations are always flexible, changing with every movement that the opponent might make. No application is rigid. Chi-na is the same. These techniques are from a set of Hongar Kung Fu. One of the major advantages of set practice is that these techniques can be practiced at full speed and power. Whenever sparring or working out with partner drills, both practitioners must withhold fatal impact from their strikes to avoid injuring their partners. When shadow boxing in a set such as this, there is no holding back. If you practice these techniques with a partner, proceed slowly. Chi-na techniques will apply maximum leverage to vulnerable points on the body. And if this is practiced without caution, serious injury can result. In actual combat, these attacks would be made at full velocity and the opponent would be caught by surprise. An attack of this ferocity cannot be emulated for training without injuring your training partner. Students must practice prudence with the underlying realization that in a real fight there would be no holds barred. Frequently in these sets, Chi-Na applications are difficult to interpret. Chi-Na applications can be very subtle and require a deep understanding of the human body and its frailties. This is the soft style martial art of Tai Chi Chuan. Its light and graceful movements conceal many effective Chi-Na techniques. Strangely, many Westerners get so entranced by these movements that sometimes they fail to see these types of applications. One of the most important principles of Tai Chi Chuan is sensitivity to your opponent. Within every strong stance, there is some weakness. For every tough defense, there is an opening. To take advantage of these weaknesses and openings, one must be sensitive enough to be aware of them and quick enough to exploit them. This principle holds true for all styles of combat, especially Chi-Na. It is the nature of Chi-Na to depend upon the movements of the opponent. Chi-Na does not greet force with force. Rather, it is sensitive to the root of that force and cuts it off at the source. This sensitivity is known as listening. Listening to your opponent so that you know where their balance lies is an essential skill. It is this ability that divides great fighters from mediocre fighters. Chi-Na requires strong and flexible hands and wrists. The following exercises are recommended before practice. While keeping your forearms horizontal, rotate your wrists inward. Keep your fingers extended so that your fingertips travel in a circular pattern. Your palms rotate from facing the floor to facing the sky. Make your circling motions even and smooth, never jerky. Try to make the largest circle with your fingertips while keeping your wrists stationary. Beginning with your palm up with your thumb facing your side. Grasp your fingers firmly and pull them back toward your forearm. Sink your elbow down so your fingertips and your elbow point towards the floor. Stretch smoothly and evenly without jerking movements. Slowly decrease the distance between your fingertips and your forearm. Begin with your palm facing down, grasp your hand right next to your wrist. Sinking down both elbows evenly, press your hand down with the assistance of your other hand. Slowly decrease the distance between your elbows. Raise your hands above your head so that one thumb on one hand faces forward and the thumb on the other hand faces backwards. The hand with the thumb facing backwards grasps the back of the other hand. Both palms are facing the same direction. Pull your wrist straight down. Stretch your hand with your thumb facing forward. Keep the fingertips of the hand pointing up while sinking your wrist. With your palms pressed together, sink your wrists beneath your elbows. Your fingers point straight up. Push your fingers side to side. Stretch your hands side to side as much as you can without moving your forearms.
grasp the short baton so that both of your thumbs face the same direction. While maintaining a firm grip, rotate your hand on the thumb side so that the wrist is fully rotated, then press the baton down. From this position, raise both arms above your head and place the baton behind your back so that it is parallel to your spine. Your thumb side hand